In today's video, we're going to go over a list of formulas associated with electrochemistry. So if you have a test coming up in this subject, you may want to take some notes. So the first thing you need to be able to do is calculate the cell potential of, let's say, a battery. And using specifically the standard reduction potentials, it's going to be the cell potential of the cathode minus the cell potential of the anode. Now, the reason why we have a negative sign for the anode is because typically when you get the value from the standard reduction potential, you need to reverse it. Because remember, reduction occurs at the cathode, but oxidation occurs at the anode. So you need to reverse the standard reduction potential for the anode so that it's an oxidation reaction. Now, it's also important to note that oxidation occurs with a loss of, of electrons. Reduction occurs with a gain of electrons. So here's an example. Copper 2 plus, when it gains two electrons, will turn into copper metal. Because the electrons are on the left side, this is a reduction reaction. In the standard reduction potential table, you'll see it written exactly like this. And the cell potential for this reaction is 0.34 volts. Now, because this is a reduction reaction, because the electrons are on the left side and copper is gaining electrons, this is going to occur at the cathode. The cathode gains mass. The anode loses mass. Now, at the anode, we'll have the opposite reaction. Zinc is going to give up two electrons to turn into zinc two plus. This is for a cell that is made up of zinc metal and copper metal. Now the standard reduction potential is negative 0.76 if the reaction was written in the reverse. That's what you'll see in the standard reduction potential table. You'll see this reaction but in reverse. But the way it's written, it's positive 0.76 volts. And because the electrons are on the right side, it's an oxidation reaction, which occurs at an anode. And then basically, you'll add these two values to get the cell potential for the battery. Now, the cathode, notice that the cell potential was not reversed. So we just use a positive value for that. You'll see in the standard reduction potential table, it's written exactly like this. For the anode, we had to change the sign. In the standard reduction potential, you'll see this reaction written in, in reverse, but it'll be negative 0.76. So negative and negative 0.76 will make it positive 0.76. So that's why this equation is written this way, is because you need to reverse the reaction for the anode if you're using the values in the standard reduction potential table. So I don't want to go too much into that topic, but that's why the negative sign is there. Now let's go over some other formulas. Now this formula helps you to calculate Gibbs free energy from the standard cell potential. So if you know the cell potential, E0, you can calculate Gibbs free energy. In the reaction that we've considered, where copper, it gained two electrons to turn into copper metal, and where zinc gave away two electrons. In this case, N is two. So when you combine these reactions and you balance them out, N will be the number of electrons in the balance redox reaction. F, Faraday's constant, is 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons transferred. So using this equation, you can calculate Gibbs free energy from cell potential. By the way, for those of you who want to print out of these formulas, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. Also, if you want some example problems on how to use these formulas, uh, I'm also going to put some videos in the description as well for those of you who want more practice examples. 
Now, going back to this equation, this is just one of the many ways in which you can calculate delta G. You can also calculate delta G if you know the equilibrium constant K. So it's negative RT ln K. If you set these two equations equal to each other, you can get the cell potential in terms of K. The cell potential is negative RT ln K divided by NF. Now, if you need to calculate K from the cell potential, it's E and Fe over RT. And if you need to calculate K from delta G, you could use this equation. So those are some additional formulas that uh, you may want to write down. Now let's talk about the nurse equation. There's two forms of it. The non-standard cell potential is equal to the standard cell potential minus 0 0.0591 log Q over N. Now, if you're wondering what Q is, let's say if you have a reaction, 2A turns into, actually, let's use a specific example. Let's say we have zinc metal reacting with copper 2 plus, and it turns into zinc 2 plus and copper metal. The reaction quotient Q is calculated in a very similar way as the equilibrium constant K. It's products over reactants. Now, zinc metal and copper metal, those are in the solid state, so you don't include that in the equilibrium expression. So neither would you include that for the reaction quotient Q. So it's going to be the products, zinc 2 plus, over the reactants, copper 2 plus. Now, the coefficients are 1, so the exponent will be 1. If we add a 2 or 3, then that will affect the corresponding exponents. So that's how you would calculate the reaction quotient Q. Now, this reaction works under standard conditions. If the temperature were to change, that would affect the cell potential. And so you would use the other variant of the nurse equation, which is this. It's the standard cell potential minus RT over NF times the natural log of Q, as opposed to regular log of Q. So this log has the base 10. This one has base E where E is approximately 2.71828 and so forth. Now for both of these equations, R is 8.3145 joules per mole per Kelvin. Now when dealing with electroplating, there are some conversion factors you want to be familiar with. Based on Faraday's constant, one mole of electrons is equal to 96,485 coulombs. And you need to know that one coulomb is equal to one amp times one second. This is based on the equation Q is equal to IT. So Q is the charge with the units in coulombs. I is the electric current with the units in amps, T is the time in seconds. Now it's important to know that the work done by a charge is equal to the magnitude of the charge times the voltage. And one volt is equal to one joule per coulomb. Volt is the units of electric potential. An electric potential is basically the work per unit of charge, where work is measured in joules. Voltage is electric potential difference. So just to illustrate that, let's say 
if the electric potential at point A is 25 volts and the electric potential at point B is 10 volts, the voltage between A and B is the electric potential difference of these two points, so it's 15 volts. So that's what voltage is relative to electric potential. Now, there are some other formulas and some other notes related to electrochemistry, and you could find all of that in the formula sheet, which I'm going to post down below. So if you want those additional formulas, feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. Thanks for watching.